How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is still option B, Biochemistry, Volume 4B, where we talk about carbohydrates. Let's get straight into that video. So, 4B, carbohydrates, we talk about the formation of disaccharides and polysaccharides. In the last video, we talked about just monosaccharides, one sugar. We need to be able to describe the bond that link that forms between monosaccharides when they convert to form disaccharides and polysaccharides, and we need to be able to do some drawings as well. So a disaccharide is a carbohydrate formed when two monosaccharides undergo a condensation reaction. Like monosaccharides, disaccharides dissolve in water, taste sweet, and are also called sugars. Maltose is formed when we have two glucose molecules that react via a condensation reaction where we eliminate water. So two of the hydroxide groups in both of the alpha glucoses, that's where the condensation reaction will occur. So this kind of drawing is as simple as linking those two sugars together. The rest of the structure won't change. So here I am just putting in the rest of the structure for the sugar, making sure that I put my OHs in the right spot. And then I need to draw the link between the two sugars, which is an ether link. It's bond, O, bond. Now that link, that O, that C, O, C, is described as an ether link in terms of the chemistry, but in biological terms, it's referred to as a glycosidic link. The glycosidic link is what holds the two monosaccharides together to form a disaccharide. So I just need to make sure that I put my two sugars directly together to form that ether link. Both of the sugars must be in their ring structures and this will not work if we try and, draw, try and put two straight chain structures together. Don't forget we also have to balance for the water as well. So here I am highlighting the link. If the question asks you to identify and name the link between two, in between a disaccharide, it's described as a glycosidic link in terms of the biochemistry. In terms of the chemical, it's an ether link. Sucrose is an artificial sweetener formed the, from the condensation of fructose and glucose. So the same procedure will happen. Two of those OH groups one from the glucose, one from the fructose, will react together in a condensation reaction, eliminating water, forming that glycosidic bond between the glucose and the fructose to produce our disaccharide, which is sucrose. So again, I've just got to look at the structures, the cyclic structures of glucose and fructose, join them together with my glycosidic link, my COC, Remembering that fructose is a five-membered ring, where glucose is a six-membered ring. And then not forgetting to put my water at the end to balance for my water. So here I have two monosaccharides joining together, eliminating one water. If I had 100 monosaccharides joining together, I would eliminate 99 waters. So we always have that N minus one relationship with the number of waters that has been eliminated. Polysaccharides are when we have three or more sugars joined together and they're linked by those glycosidic bonds. There are three important polysaccharides. There's glycogen, which is found in animals. There's starch, which is found in plants. And then cellulose is the structural material of plants. Each of these has a slightly different structure from the other. You can see in the bottom left hand corner we've got a monosaccharide being a simple sugar, a disaccharide being two linked together. Starch is a straight chain polymer. Glycogen has some branched links and cellulose actually has a lot of branching. That branching or those cross links provide the cellulose with the additional structure and the support that plants need. The Starch is the energy storage in plants. It's glucose that can be used in cellular respiration. And glycogen is the energy storage in animals. Digestion of polysaccharides involves the hydrolysis or the addition of water to break the bonds between the monosaccharides or the polysaccharides. 
We have enzymes that catalyze these reactions in animals. However, most humans lack the enzyme cellulase, which is required to digest cellulose. So cellulose actually can't be digested by humans and animals. So if we have starch or glycogen, we can undergo a hydrolysis reaction, which is addition of water to break it down into disaccharides, and then further digestion breaks it down into glucose, which is then transported to different parts of the body and used to produce energy. Remember that those disaccharides and monosaccharides have plenty of OH bonds, so they're very soluble. Okay, some top tips for 4B. Don't forget to balance with H2O, and we always have N minus one waters where N is the number of monosaccharides if they ask you to find the molar mass. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.